It's Janet Joplin. Ha, 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 ha. Actually, that goes, credit goes to Byron because he said Janet Joplin the other day too. No, it's another hole in a tree that we have found. We're actually on Gwari Pan Road, and I just saw these little eyes, and I thought, oh, that's exciting. Isn't that amazing? We're so lucky at the moment, and I'm not surprised, though. It's typical at this time of the year to see Janet and white-tailed mongoose and honey badgers and pangolins and all these cool things just because the bush is so exposed. I don't think you'd see that in summer because uh, the tree might get a couple of leaves on it, and I think the shrubs in front of it uh, could be a lot fuller, too, so it would make it a bit difficult. But that's a great little spot in there. Now, remember not to stick your hand into... Uh, the crevices of trees because you might not be lucky and find something like a genet you could find a snake you could find a scorpion you could find many different things that you wouldn't want to touch but that is really awesome i'd love to know how big that cavity really is inside although i suppose genets are nimble little creatures and they can curl themselves up into little balls if they wanted to so they wouldn't need much space now we're really lucky we have Genevieve the Janet that comes and visits us in camp quite regularly and she's very relaxed she's she's not tame you can't touch her I reckon you'd lose a finger should mistake in your finger for a pork sausage or a cheese griller and uh, you don't know what types of diseases that they carry so it's always good to stay clear even though clear even though she is relaxed and she comes close she's just used to people she's obviously lived in camps for most of her life and and going into the staff villages and things like that it wouldn't put it past me if people have fed her in the past however we have a strict no feeding policy well especially when tristan and i are around we enforce it we don't we don't feed her and uh, we don't want to sort of intervene with nature but she comes around and she she sniffs about are you coming out the hole oh you're gonna groom yourself that's quite cool not every day that you get to watch a a genet groom itself i apologize the light changing color all the time are you gonna go in for red uh, it's very easy for you to say that my arms are very sore now <laughs> the way that i'm positioning that's why i want to actually reposition i apologize let me just get a better there we go. Now I've rested my arms, one on my leg and one on the other back of the chair. So Janet has been sleeping for most of the day and now it is waking up. It's very difficult to be able to tell male and female, especially well, one of the only ways that I suppose you know is if you look for the manly parts underneath the tail. It would probably be the easiest, but it is pretty tough when they're in a hole like that. But that's so cool to see a Janet actually waking up from its slumber. I've never seen that before. Kathy, you said we need to find a Janet Lopez. Uh, Lopez. Why did I say Lopez? What even accent is that? Jennifer Lopez. We can have one. Obviously, we don't know if these are the same individuals that we're seeing. We only know that Genevieve and Camp is the same one because what are the chances that you'll see so many relaxed Janets like that? And she also has a big notch out of her ear, so she's quite easy. And she's a she. We checked the other day when she was dangling her tail. We ducked underneath her. Very brave of Tristan and I to check. Jenny, you've said that this is your first Janet. How fitting. Jenny the Janet. Very cool. Save, do you think if I move forward a little bit, we'll, we should get a better view of, of this Janet's face? Okay. Let's try that. I'm, I'm just going to move slightly forward. Just that you obviously saw there's a slight obstruction. Just for Seb. I've got a clear view, but I think if I do the same thing for Seb, how's that? Yeah. Let's test. Hopefully it hasn't run. No, it's still there. Just a little bit down, let me get both arms ready. Point and shoot. Go down a little bit. There we go. Just in the corner. Still not quite ready to come out just yet, but eventually it will. Now they eat a number of different things. Like we've been discussing, that a lot of the animals are opportunistic feeders out here. And a genet will eat a lot of different things. They will eat, I wouldn't be surprised if they ate eggs, but they love insects, so they specifically like those alates, the princes and princesses of the termites that fly away after the rain they'll eat an abundance of insects so even those little those big crickets that we got to see a kingfisher eating once that's what they'll gobble on and i'm sure they'll get little birds every now and then too like i said opportunistic now, cat, you're wondering how big is a genet firstly a genet is also not a cat just in case you were wondering um lengthwise 
from tip of its nose to the end of its tail, I'm busking. I'll have to check on the measurements, but that means I have to put the spotlights down, which I can't do right now because this is too important. Let's guess. Let's go with, I would say, a meter to 1.2 meters in total. They've got a very long tail. Their body's not necessarily very long, but that tail, I wouldn't be surprised if their tail is even longer than their body. It's amazing. And it's so important for balance, especially when you're climbing around trees. And like genets, of course, do they, not only do they live in them, but they will move around in them too. And balancing on those branches, is, it's impressive. And the most impressive thing I've actually got to see was uh, Genevieve running across. We have this basically a lutter fence. So it's a... Uh, it's not quite bamboo, but it's thin pieces of wood that, so if you get, if you get what bamboo looks like, so that type of thing, a little bit thicker, and they're placed together quite closely, uh, what is wrong with me, closely, <laughs> too, so I'm doing spoonerisms, like, I added the T to closely, because I was going to say closely together, and and then it creates an awesome fence, but you can imagine uh, the diameter of uh, the the latter poles is not particularly big so when she runs across the top of them it's amazing it's like the equivalent of a tightrope walker uh, watching a tightrope walker walk across a piece of rope and she does it with absolute ease and then she'll jump from that small sort of narrow position onto a tree but it's uh, you know what i think i'm going to take these lights off of her now the reason being is that she doesn't look quite ready to wake up just yet or if it is a she we had some yawns we also had of course, um, some grooming, but has gone back to sleep again. So we, we don't want to put too much bright light on them. They typically don't enjoy it, but how lovely is that skyline? Isn't that beautiful? Lots of different colors, dead knob thorn trees silhouetted against the sky. It would be nice if you had the genet coming out and standing on one of those open branches. I would never have even thought of the opportunity to see a silhouetted Janet against the sky. Now, Snazzy, you're wondering if that hole was made by the Janet. No, I don't think so. They use natural cavities. So that could have been created by, uh, say, a woodpecker, maybe an old nesting site again from a barbet or something along those lines, or just, just the, the tree, the center, just rotting away. And then maybe if there were some bits of scraps, you know, sort of like uh, some wood that maybe the termites have eaten and it was all dead, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Janet would maybe make that nesting site a little bit more comfortable and perhaps scrape some of uh, the undesired debris out. But otherwise, uh, they are unable to sort of, you know, widen it. They don't have a nice sharp beak that they can peck away at it. They, they don't use their teeth. They definitely don't use their claws to claw into the tree. So it's typical natural cavities and mainly in the trees, of course.